Hi everyone, this is Nick, and now we're going to be taking a look at brewing on the Gaja Babila. So, not only will we be making some delicious coffee drinks, but also taking a look at how we can customize them to further suit our tastes. Now, let's take a look. Let's start by taking a look at our brewing options. Now, in order to get to the beverage menu for our different drinks here, we'll actually go ahead and press the menu button and then select our first option, which is the beverage menu. So we can see all of our drinks in here and scrolling down, you'll see the rest and special beverages also contains a couple more like milk froth, hot water, and the ristretto. So that is actually going to be accessed via this special drinks button. So not everything has a dedicated button. And as you can see too, not everything is accessible just in this first page of the menu. So when you want to go and program those things, you'll just need to be aware of that. We'll start with our basic espresso though, just to take a look at the things that we can program. Now we have strength. That refers specifically to the amount of ground coffee that's going to be used to brew our shot. There are gonna be five settings here. So we've got very mild all the way up to very strong, which is where I want to set mine. But something else I wanted to point out is ground coffee. Now, if you have it set to ground coffee for any of these drinks, the machine will always assume that you want to use pre-ground in the bypass on the top of the machine. But I want to brew with some whole beans. So we'll go ahead and say very strong. Coffee amount is actually the way that the machine says volume. Now we can go in here and you can see this sort of progress bar here, but I'll show you a different way that you can also program the volume where we can actually see the amount of liquid in our cup and program it that way. But in here we can make a change on that bar as well. Now temperature, that's low, normal, and high. I typically say high is the way to go. That's gonna be dispensing around maybe the mid 180s as far as temperature goes, but it's important too that you preheat any of your cups before brewing into them to really maximize that temperature. But high is my preferred temperature. And then we have taste. Now this name is probably uh, the most mysterious, but let's get into it here. We have delicate, balanced, and full body. What this actually is referring to is the pre-infusion cycle. So pre-infusion, if you're not familiar, is the process of gently introducing water to your puck prior to ramping up to a full pressure extraction. And so what that's gonna do is simply soak the puck of coffee, allow it to expand maybe a little bit, loosen up some of those solids in there before we hit it with full pressure for extraction. So full body, that's gonna be the longest pre-infusion cycle before brewing. That's my preferred, uh, option as well. And then as we see, our last option here is just to restore to the default, but I just programmed it. So we're not going to do that. Go ahead and click the back button though, to go back to our main menu. One thing that's worth noting before we go ahead and demo some drinks is that there's also this aroma strength button right here on the front of the machine. So when you press it, you'll now see the strength icons appearing as these beans fill in. This is a temporary override that lets you override the strength for any of the drinks before you brew them. So you can also use this to choose pre-ground coffee without having to go in and reprogram the drink. Now let's go ahead and take a look at brewing. Now, before we brew some beautiful shots, I do want to go ahead and give you just a quick demo of what your first shot might look like on this machine. And that's simply because as the grinder gets used to your coffee, it's going to need just some time to learn how to grind it properly. And your first shot may just be underdosed. By the second or third one, you'll have delicious crema rich shots of espresso, thanks to something called the Gaja Adapting System. Let's fast forward now to that second or third shot that your Bobula is going to brew. So before we do that though, I do wanna go ahead and position my spouts down here. By having them closer to the cup, you'll eliminate splashing and actually reduce air exposure for your coffee. To brew our espresso now with the settings we just programmed, we'll simply go ahead and press the espresso button.
that delay that you saw, that was the pre-infusion getting that coffee pre-soaked and you can really see the result in that decisive layer of crema on the top of that brewed from bean to cup with just one push. Now, as you can see, we have a tall cup. That's because we're going to make a long drink now. And as I mentioned for programming, we can actually do some volume-based programming that we can see with our own eyes. Now, there are a couple little things that I wanna cover first of all. So if you are going to use a taller cup even than say this one, we can go ahead and remove the spout assembly. But it's really important that when you're putting it back on that you make sure that it's properly aligned. So you have the surface here where the flow knob is and there's actually just on the inside here a little water uh, path and that can cause the coffee to kind of drip down the sides if it's not aligned properly. Now the other thing to make note of is our flow knob that we have here too. So it's sort of a righty tighty lefty loosey sort of uh, situation that we've got here and the larger that these dots are actually the more restricted the flow becomes and the smaller they are the lighter it becomes. Now we'll go ahead and program in a long coffee here and I'm going to have the flow restrictor knob open as far as it goes just so that we can kind of demo how open and how fast that coffee flows. But We'll start slow just so you can really see how quickly it ramps up. There'll even be a little bit of a sound change in the pump as we've relieved some of that pressure. Now, to actually program volume into a drink, we'll press and hold the button as opposed to just pressing it. And we have memo now that appears on the screen. So you can see that slower restricted flow while as we turn the dial, our streams of coffee actually get even thicker and you can hear that pump noise increase. And when we've reached our desired volume of liquid in our cup, we'll simply go ahead and press the stop button. You can see those streams have really lightened up from all the liquid that has passed through the coffee. And now the coffee button will dispense this much liquid again. And so I say coffee, but I mean to say espresso lungo. And that's a really nice shot though. This is a full cup of coffee brewed under pressure with the espresso extraction process. Something that's going to be much richer and more full bodied than a gravity fed drip pot that you might use at home. Another feature I'd like to cover is the times two options. So for our coffee drinks that we've got here, the espresso, espresso lungo, and coffee, you can see that there is a 2x icon next to those buttons. That means that these drinks can be made twice in a row if you simply press the button twice. You'll see 2x and then the drink name on the screen, and the Gaja Babila will grind and brew that drink twice in a row. There are some advantages here, so say for instance if you have a guest who wants the exact same drink as you, but you can also use some clever programming to limit the volume of liquid in your cup, but also to double the amount of ground coffee for an extra caffeinated beverage. Let's go ahead and make a times two espresso. And just like that, it's that easy to make two of any coffee beverage with the Gaja Babila. For our last beverage that we'll make in this segment, we'll go ahead and take a look at brewing something using pre-ground coffee. Now, any of these drinks can use pre-ground coffee, but I'll demo it on the espresso. Without having to change our programming, we can use the aroma strength selector to choose the scoop icon and that lets us know that we're about to brew using pre-ground. So there's a couple of nuances that I want to cover though 
when it comes to using this option. First of all, your coffee needs to be ground for espresso, so it has to have the correct fineness that will resist the incoming water to extract that crema. You also want to make sure that it's nice and fresh because pre-ground coffee loses its freshness and its crema that much more quickly than whole beans. With our scoop that we've got, this is how we're going to measure the correct amount. My recommendation is to go in and get a bit of a heaping scoop so that you can shake the coffee in the scoop and fill in any of the crevices. Then, using either the flat edge of a knife or your finger, simply level off this scoop. If you overfill the scoop or you compact it, you can actually max out the pressure in the brew group and it will cause you to dump your shot and you'll have to brew again. This is a terrific option if you have guests who prefer decaf, but you have caffeinated whole beans in the hopper. Now I've timed out here. We'll go ahead though and press the aroma strength selector again, get our scoop icon, we'll press espresso, and we're being prompted to insert our coffee into the bypass chute. So I'll try not to block you actually there and uh, simply tip this in gently. Close that up and brew. And as you can see, with proper technique, our restricted flow, of course, and some great pre-infusion, we have a delicious looking shot of espresso prepared using pre-ground coffee.